Hi, I'm John Alexandrov. I'm here today with Micah Ruzioni, the Olympic gold medal champion from the Miracle on Ice, Mike will call it. You know, uh, so many people over the years have heard that term, Miracle on Ice. And I know everybody's already wondering and thinking, what was it, what was it like to be on the ice that day? Not only when you beat the Soviets, but when you got the gold medal. I think, I think the whole experience, it's, it's a very proud moment, um, knowing you know, everything you had worked for and sacrificed, the whole team for six months, uh, training so hard, practicing so hard, and to have everything come into place at the right time, and you know, kind of like the perfect storm in some ways, that uh, we were able to capture the spirit of a nation and, and enjoy it at the same time. Like you used to wear a team. You know, uh, like in life and in business and in athletics, most of the time it requires a team of people to be successful at anything that we do, even if it's an individual sport. I mean, you obviously were in a group sport, but what was it like to be part of a team? How important was the team for you to, to get to the level that you did? Well, without, without your teammates, you're not going to be successful, and everybody had to buy into it. You know, you can't, you know in a hockey team, there were 20 players, and you can't have uh, you know, 19 players on one page and one guy on, on their own page. So I think that the key to our success in 1980 was 20 guys believing in themselves, but more importantly, believing in each other. And for six months, that was our mindset. We realized how important each member of that team was. You know, Herb Brooks used to say that everybody has a job and everybody has a role. Understand what your job is, understand what your role is, and we have a chance to be successful. And it's funny, we used to have a saying in the locker room that individually you can be good, but collectively we can become champions. And that was really a mindset that we had. You know, that word champion is really something like, I, I've done some research on this as a matter of fact. You know, there's, there's, a, you know, there's almost like an opposite to everything, like a yin and a yang. You know, right. there's, there's light and dark, there's cold and hot. There's no opposite to the word champion. You know, you're you're right. you're you you're right. either have the makeup or can have the makeup of a champion, and you can learn to become a champion. Some are destined to be champions, right. like like you and your teammates. However, there's no opposite to that word. When you're a champion, you're really somebody special in life, and you really have a desire to accomplish something that maybe most other people don't. Well, so many athletes chase that one thing, the championship. They right. chase that ring. You know, how many guys you talk to had great careers but never won that championship, and they look back and and realize that there's something that's missing in their life. And when you have that championship, when you, when you are the best at something, uh, it's a pretty special feeling knowing, you know, again, that you, you're, you're on top of the world, uh, kind of like Jimmy Cagney said in that movie, uh, on top of the world, Ma. But that's right. really how you feel. When, when you're a champion and you're the best, it's a, it's a special feeling. Mike, uh, some people may not realize the type of preparation that you and your teammates had to go through, even just to get to the Olympics, never mind uh, beat the Soviets, and then many people don't even remember that after you beat the Soviets, you had to go on to win another game to win the, to win the gold medal. But let's talk a little bit about you know the commitment and what it took to even get there in the first place. Well, this doesn't happen overnight. Um, you know that's the one thing when I talk at sales meetings and I talk to people, people see an end result. Uh, but what enables the end result to happen? What enabled our hockey team to win? Uh, you know game after game during the Olympic Games, and it didn't like start in Lake Placid. It started with our team six months prior. Right. The practice, the training, the, the, the travel, all the little things that are so important. But when you break that down, it even started before that. For me, it started when I was eight years old playing hockey in the backyard right. or out on ponds. And if you look back at my teammates, you know, they didn't just all of a sudden become great hockey players. It was a process that started when they were young. It was a commitment that they made when they were young. Um, and a work ethic that they instilled in themselves to become the best of the best and to be successful. So, you know, again, like I said, people saw an end result in Lake Placid, but to me what makes the story more amazing is how it started from the beginning, the time, the effort, the work, the sacrifices that we put in as a hockey team to put us in a position to win. You know, it's interesting, Mike, you're, you used the word, uh, you know, since we were maybe eight years old, I'm sure there are people who have imagined since they were eight years old, ten years old, twelve years old, that they could be a champion in life. May not have, maybe not an Olympic gold medal right. champion like yourself and Bonnie Blair and Dan Jansen, which who we'll talk about in a moment. Uh, however, I think we all internally have this desire to be a champion at something. Right. You don't have to be a, a, a champion in, in, in sports. Right. There, there are other opportunities in life, uh, whether you're a doctor, whether you're a teacher, um, you know, whether you're on your own business. I mean, whatever, whatever you want, you have that opportunity to control your destiny. And you control whether you want to be successful or if you don't want to be successful. And a lot of that is choices that you have to make, decisions that you have to make. Uh, making the right choices, making the right decisions uh, enables you for that opportunity to be the best and to be s successful and again maybe to be that champion. Now Mike, how, how did you guys hold it together? Because uh, <laughs> uh, you know, You've heard a million people say this, right, that yeah. they could tell you exactly where they were when when you beat the Soviets. And I, I, I mean, you and I had this discussion probably right. a couple weeks ago about where I was and how, and how much fun it was and that type of thing. 
But in terms of, you beat the Soviets now, the world is stunned, the, the country is just in awe of everything that's happening. However, you had to prepare for another game. So for, first of all, how did, you, how did you all handle that and how did you prepare yourself to go to the next level to, to, to win the, the gold medal? Because a lot of teams would have stopped right there and said, right. oh, we did something great. Well, that, 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 you know, the type of team that we had, we realized yeah. that we didn't go there to win one game. We didn't go there just to beat the Soviets. Our goal going into the Olympic Games was to medal, win a medal. We thought a bronze medal was very possible. And now we got ourselves in a position to win the gold medal. And that's what you went there for, to win the highest prize. We didn't go to beat the Soviets. We didn't go to beat Norway or Czechoslovakia. We went to the Olympic Games to win a gold medal. And we would put ourselves in a position. After we beat the Soviets, we had a hard practice the next day. I mean, a real hard practice the right. next day. And Herb just made us aware that we had another game to play. And uh, Again, nobody in that locker room was looking past Finland. We realized we had an opportunity to do something pretty special. And we weren't going to let it slip away. Mike, now you're, you're a well-known inspirational and motivational speaker. We're, we're going to talk about some of the other things that you're involved in in a couple moments. However, if you, if you had to give people watching just one main piece of advice, maybe you've been asked this before, one main piece of advice on people who do want to do, take control of their own destiny, people who do want to advance beyond where they're in life right now, uh, maybe they want to become a champion of something like we talked about in, uh, a few moments ago. What's the, the one thing that you could say to them? If I had to advise you right now to elevate yourself in your life, your business, your career, with your family, what would it be? I think it's simple. You have to have a work ethic. Uh, right. You have to work. You know, no, Nothing comes easy in life. Nothing comes easy in business. Nothing comes easy in, in, in sports. Uh, you have to have a work ethic. And it's, you know, I go back to things my dad told me, uh, that if, if you understand the value of work, at some point in your life you'll be successful. It might not be today or tomorrow or next month or next year, but when you're the best at what you do, I guarantee you it's the work that you put into it.